morning, everyone. Test, test, can you hear me? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Baruch Winters. I'm the owner of Barracuda's Computer Repair, located right next door. So if you have any issues with your technology, please feel free. <coughs> please feel free to give me a call. Um, I have some flyers on the table in the back. I just want to, again, thank everyone for, thank everyone for coming out to see Dr. Ali Mohammed. So without further ado, please give a round of applause for Ali Mohammed. Please stand and thank you, brother. I appreciate the opportunity. How's everybody? Fine. First, please forgive me for getting here late. How many people are actually here at 10 o'clock? Raise your hand. Ooh. <laughs> See, I've been waiting for an hour. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, um, we're going to jump right into the presentation. We're going to be here today and tomorrow. I think today we got to be out here about one. So what I want to do is I want to talk about probably the most important aspect of dwelling into health from the angle that we're going to dwell into. And that is um, the problem that so-called so -called African Americans are having when we deal with the subject of health. And we deal with this in many layers. The first layer is just general education. The second layer is after we find out the problem, how do we get the professionals up in our own community to assist at doing the proper diagnosis, proper, proper treatment, and proper nutritional education for people of our gene pool. After we get to that level where we can get some people and we have some people there, then we're dealing with uh, what could be considered a socio-political right, all right, when it comes to our health and the situation with our health. So we have to talk about that in those layers, and I'm going to uh, do my best to do that. Yeah, I didn't hook it up yet, but yeah, you can, you can uh, plug it up. All right. So when's the last time you had a health lecture here? Anybody, was anybody here? Yeah. Was anybody here? Yeah. Who was it? It's not me, not me. Oh. You said my nemesis. <laughs> I don't have no nemesis. That's my brother, even if he don't agree with you. Um, so Vincent Inky, who else? Anybody else? No Dr. Africa's, no Dr. Sabies in, in Chicago lately? Hmm. Uh, Sabi would be next week. Like next week, right? He'll be here next week. Okay, great, 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 great. So we do have some of our brothers. Any sisters? Any sisters? Um, that have been in the community advocating health at all? No? Not one in Chicago? Come on, now, give me some. Now I'm speaking circle like that. Really? In Chicago? So right now, there's no sisters who are advocating community health, per se, in the form of lectures or presentations or community education? <laughs> Any, anybody got restaurants here or something, health food restaurants here in yeah. Chicago? There was one sister, I came, when I came last time, she, has a, she had a store Oh, what's the sister's name? Decal. Decal. Say it again. Decal. Karen's. Karen's, yeah. Karen's. She got a garden across the street? I think so, yeah. Yeah, that might be Karen's. Karen's downtown. All right. So I'm, I'm asking because I want to know what the conversation is here. Like, what is it like? You know what I mean? Because if we, usually if you're not communicating, black people are not communicating about something, then it's going to show a large problem. Communicating like as family members, lectures, presentations, a center, a restaurant where we meet up. Say it again. Big problems, and to have health problems is a is is a big problem because you can actually die from it. So we're looking at life or death scenario situation. Okay, so I wrote this book. This book is called the Melanin Encyclopedia. I'm gonna actually not use the PDF. I'm gonna use the PowerPoint. So let's do this. I wrote this book, it's called a Melanin Encyclopedia. And the Melanin Encyclopedia has one aim, to teach you about melanin, which, this might cause some controversy, I don't think you've ever actually learned about it. Not in the way that would drive you based on principles of nature to change your behaviors. Namely, let's just start with a basic one, what you eat. Somebody's gonna leave here today, right? And I guarantee they're gonna eat something that's injurious to themselves. Either through ignorance, because they don't know, they have no idea, or they know better, but they got a little sweet tooth or something, and the craving is driving them towards, I want that, all right? And either scenario, the body is a mathematical machine. It just responds to the 
causes and gives you effects. That's it. So if we have a, any type of health malady, it's because of a lack of self-awareness of how to protect our bodies. Right? So that's a big issue. The reason why that's a big issue is because in order to live on this earth, or at least in, in the form that we're living, you need a body. And if you're not going to take care of your body, you're going to have some issues. You're going to have some psychological issues. You're going to have some biological issues. All right? And here's the, here's the reality. There is not one European institution, not one, on the earth that is discussing your anatomy and physiology in open and advocating you to do something functional for yourself. If you do, now that's just my opinion. If you know one, please start naming them while I get this popcorn. You have the floor. Does anybody know of any European institutions that are actually educating peoples of African descent or indigenous descent about their anatomy and physiology? Why? Because that's not in their interests. It's not in their political interests. It's not in the monetary interests. None of it. Okay. So we're in a situation where we have lost our nationality in the sense of historically through what we call slavery. And through that, our traditions were broken. It doesn't mean they don't still exist in various places on the planet. It means we've been trying to connect with them over the past few decades to try to get them back, to learn what it is that we're supposed to be doing, which we had been doing for eons of time before that MAFA or that interface with these outsiders, all right? So it's very important to understand that we do have political rights that protect us. I extracted this from um, something called the UN Declaration of, of Rights for the Protection of Indigenous People, all right? And this is a document that was drafted in uh, 2007. 144 nations got together and decided that colonization and its impact on various indigenous peoples had been so severe that they were going to bring some legislation to assist those indigenous peoples with uh, acting on their own self-autonomy to heal some of those problems. Now we have to understand this, when we look at bodies of Organization of American States, United Nations, and sometimes when we watch YouTube we get spooked out and we think they're all Illuminati, they're all co-opted, they're all this. Most of the people who are part of these, uh, these 144 nations are people with melanin, not the non-melanin people. As a matter of fact, the five main colonizing agents at that time, in 2007, decided that they were not going to sign on to this declaration. And then later, Obama gave an oral sanctioning. He never put anything in writing. But the point is, the people on the, you are the, you are the majority on the planet. That is, is important for you to understand. All right? You are the majority, and there's been a minority who have caused the problem. So now, it's flipped here because you feel like you're a minority because you hear that word all the time. Minorities, minority rights, etc. And that's to trap you in civil rights. Right? And inside of the psychology of civil rights is, I get whatever the government gives me. I'm going to take this health care that Barack Obama suggested. I need this insurance policy because I might get sick. Because we don't understand the laws of health. All right? But this particular law, Article 24 of this body of law, you can look it up, basically states, indigenous peoples, and that is you, you are a group of indigenous people that were stolen from Africa or your ancestors were already here and they were kidnapped here. Period. That's it. Besides that, you don't have any other lineage besides the rape of Europeans. All right, so you are an indigenous people. Have the right to their traditional medicines, whatever that may be, and to maintain their health practices, whatever that was, including the conservation of their vital medicinal plants, animals, and minerals. So that is what you call a human right based on international law. But in order to, be, to access that, first you gotta be aware of it. Then you have to be aware of yourself as an indigenous person, period. That's it. And then you can activate that. All right? Now, why is that important? All right? I might have some of these slides in here where I can express the importance of that. But if I don't, 
when Barack Obama was in office, he passed something called, he signed something that Congress passed called the Food and Safety and Modernization Act. And that particular act basically stated that the Department of Human Services on the federal level was going to take a preemptive measure to try to stop food contamination by not allowing anybody to manufacture, produce, uh, create any type of food product without a license. So I'll give you an example of what that means. Prior to that, if you were an herbalist selling your herb, you had a local store, you're going out, you could just put like a little sign on the back of your herb that says, this has not been tested by the FDA, blah, 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 blah. That's your disclaimer. Now the law says you can't sell the product without a license, like a license like GNC has or other entities have. So even though people are still doing it, whoever is going to come in as the next president, which probably will be somebody, a pale face, all right, they're going to have the, the ability to put a squeeze on your community to create more assets and money for the engines that are around you. And that's important to understand because whenever these types of things happen, once the gradual implementation happens, they have drastic impact on our communities. What does that look like? It looks like this. It looks like over the next 10 years, black people who had businesses in alternative medicine who have no political status or don't know how to access international right losing the ability to continue to do what they're doing to finance themselves as far as selling products and those particular things, particularly selling products. So uh, I've been going out and trying to reach out to all of these, my brothers and sisters who are in this type of field so they can be aware of that so they can make the proper adjustments. But the Food and Safety Modernization Act says, even though it's not being implemented yet, that you could be in prison for 10 years for distributing a food product without a license. So that includes local gardening and horticulture. You're going to eventually, the licensing and inspection units, after they start adopting the federal legislation, are going to start requiring you to have a license. Because they see the surge in what? People who want to do their own, grow their own foods. Right? So now, what are we going to do to cut it off? The beast is always trying to find a way to clip at you. Now, they already have it in place. Now, all they have to do is just disseminate the implementation of it. So what is your response going to be? If you have no political status, you don't want to work together, you want to claim your nationality, you don't want to have united fronts where we share information. That's why I ask, are we talking to each other? Because when we're not talking to each other, they're talking to each other and passing things to affect us as their so-called property. So we need more dialogue, some, some intense dialogue to, uh, to bring some functionality to these things. So our goal, what is our goal? Our goal is to operate indigenous clinics for our people all across the country, which means that we have to come in, not only have people who are interested in buying books and getting things, but people who are interested in going through a training mechanism so they can come in here, and everybody in here, they can do a diagnostic just by looking at them, looking at their face and saying, okay, this is what's wrong in your body, or taking out external machinery to do it and producing a report so you can say, okay, this is what's going on in your body based on our principles of anatomy and physiology, and this is what you need to do to resolve these issues biologically. And then to go further to say, these are the psychological, underpinning, emotional things that are giving rise to that. So you have to address all of these issues too that you're ignoring, okay? So now, we, that's, this, is, this is what a medicine man or a woman was in our societies. Someone who could do real uh, therapy or healing in that sense. So that's our job. This is not something that we have to wait on. We already have these courses, curriculums, et cetera, available um, to do this, all right? And as we get this jurisdiction in better order, which is completely out of order, we'll figure out how to get people more functional, you know what I mean, so that they can implement these particular things, all right? So this is the machine. Some of you have seen uh, some of the other brothers that have some of these quantum magnetic analyzers. I have one right over here. We can let you hold this little rod to it. It takes 30 seconds. It produces a 150-page report. We can restrict it to a composite report, and it tells you everything that's going on in every organ, system, gland, whatever. The technology is really simple. It's sending an electrical uh, signal into the body, and it's getting electrical feedback. And the feedback is determining cellular necrosis, cancer, don't mainly those two, because those are the things that happen to cells. They're either starting to die or they're dying, and then they're mitotically dividing and causing you know, problems in the body. And those are frequencies, electrical frequencies, right? 
a cell is start, starting to die at 700 cycles per second. By 750 cycles per second, it's cancerous. So all we need to know is, okay, how can we uh, develop a technology which was developed at Yale University first, and then the Chinese have it in their settlement, all right? Yeah, they're making money everywhere, right? So we can do these reports. We can do these reports here. I'll be here till Monday, so if people want to get reports later today or um, tomorrow, um, I'll make sure that before we leave, I, you get my number so you can come down um, and, uh, and get a report. All right. So we also do other types of diagnostics. We can look at things like your teeth. This is a system that I've developed called astrodenition, where we can look at your teeth, all right, and tell which organs inside of your bodies are problematic or degenerating. All right, so you take a whole analysis by looking at the teeth. So if you have some incisors or molars missing, then we can say, okay, they were probably that's localized into your small intestines, your gallbladder, et cetera. So you know how to respond to those things, okay? The teeth are connected to the organs through what we're calling the meridian system. So I'm telling you, this, this is all diagnostics instead of somebody taking a few cc's of your fluids or your blood, which you don't know that when you go into that facility, you've already contracted for them to have the ability to sell your blood, clone it, and do all kinds of other things with your blood. Okay? To give you an example, there are over 600,000 hysterectomies a year. All right? And most of those are amongst, are amongst African American women. Hysterectomy is when they take your uterus out. Okay? Or uh, when you give birth to a child, what happens? They're taking your placenta, they're taking your cord blood. These are companies that are taking those materials and selling them on the open market or using them for some type of technology. Some of them are Fortune 500 companies. So why is our community broke? If they can make other people rich. That's called a lack of your own awareness of your own wealth, right? If you can make other people wealthy by them taking your body parts, that means that they have studied you enough to know your value and you don't know your own. That's a problem. For us to be walking around in time and space and not aware of our own wealth. And then for other people who say, well, they, they don't recognize that they're gold walking gold. I'm on this gold trip. I'm going to get some of that gold. And they take your red blood cells and then sell them all over the open market to make medications, cell gene, life bank USA, all these companies. So instead of doing those type of diagnostics where you're feeding, you're, you're energetically feeding a thing that is your antithesis, why not uh, develop a system like this? And then we can also look and connect the T to the astromagnetic influences of planets, all right? So this goes into a little bit higher level of diagnostics where we can look at birth charts and tell what's wrong, all right? Because all of us inherit energies from our parents. And some of those energies are not functional. All right. We also use different types of dietary uh, transition, transitional diets. All right. If you're eating flesh, you're automatically going to be recurrently sick. Period. There's no other way to deal with it. Your body does not just digest one atom of flesh. The only entities that are digesting those are the parasites that are living inside of you. I'm going to say that again. Your tissues do not digest one atom of the dead flesh and carcass that you eat. Not one atom of it. It is the colonies of parasites, spores, and funguses that are actually not you. In traditional div divination, we call that a possession. You possess? by an entity that's not you, but it's inside, living inside of you and feeding off of you doing something dysfunctional against yourself. All right? So that's happening to millions of people. All right? And what we're saying is we have to learn the science of diet and then implement the science of diet. All right? If we're going to eat things, starch, flesh, and other things that are not good for us, then we're going to stay recurrently sick. So we have different levels of eating. All right? And my book, The Mellow Encyclopedia, is about reducing nitrogenous compounds, which are the problem when it comes to whatever particular food that you eat. All right? 
So you want to get heirloom based fruits and vegetables and grains if you're still eating grains and then use fruits or fasting as a way to cleanse the body. All right. Another thing on 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 supplementation. Actually, let me I, I think I have the slide. Maybe I can show this slide. If I have it. On supplementation. If you and I I think I have this uh, slide where I can show this before. All right. Let's go up. There you go. I'll come back. If you and I this is some of the information I was just talking about. If you and I want to want to be healthy, I know I have this guy in here. Hold on one second. Maybe I don't. I want to show the visual image of what I what I'm showing here, and they can actually I don't have that slide in here. All right. But what I was going to show was a tree with pills on it. It's in another presentation. There it is. Okay. There it is. Anybody ever seen a tree like this? Mm. Any trees in Chicago like this? No. I don't think you can go anywhere and find a tree that grows pills. So why are you taking pills? Now, in every indigenous system on the planet, the tree was given a sacred, iconic imagery and meaning in that system. Because of what trees do. Trees are vital for life. Without trees, no oxygen. Period. You're done. Can't even breathe. So they are a conduit to, to keep nature in vitality. Where are the pill trees? Why are you taking a pill? Now, let me discuss something about a pill. Two types of pills you're probably going to take. Medicine, pharmaceutical, and herbal pills. First, let's start with the herbal pills. The herbal pills have no water in it. They can't do anything. Anything with no water is dead. It can't catalyze anything. It has to get water to catalyze something. That's like me coming up to this brother and having a machine and just suck all the water out of his body. What would he be? Ashes. So what are we going to do with his ashes? Except scatter them or something. So the concept of putting the concept of putting herbs into pills is purely for economy. It has nothing to do with healing. Because there's no water. Water is necessary for life. All right? So that's important. Second thing is, when you're taking, or if this is any, if anybody who's producing uh, medicinals, don't soak your herbs in alcohol. You're going to rip up membranes all up in throughout your body. You go to Whole Foods and they got wild craft, crafted herb. And you look at it like, yeah, I'm going to get this. And then it's soaked in grain alcohol. And you take it and it's, yeah. You might feel a little bit better if you're on a really bad diet. All right, because the alcohol is, is burning up other uh, dysfunctional um, colonies of parasites or whatever, all right? But my point is pills. Now, when you deal with pharmaceutical pills, you're dealing with a whole other animal. Because these things have the CYP uh, patents, chromosome patents, excuse me, um, um, cytochrome patents and they're using human tissues in the pills. Aspirin, every other medication that you can think of. And this is, in their, their theories, is to help catalyze the medicines into the tissues. You need something that can, that can carry out that activity. So they'll put blood in a cyclotron and break it up into really small, what they call a microsomal pieces, right? And there's iron in it. And then they use it in the pharmaceutical industry to produce the drugs. So if you eat, if you take in pharmaceuticals, you're a cannibal. That's that's reality. And you don't need the medicine. All you need to do is figure out, okay, how do I deal with this problem? So our ancestors used to use a substance that was in the lake beds in Africa and in South America that was called natron. That's the chemical name for it now. And natron was the sediment of different types of bicarbonates. Calcium bicarbonates, sodium bicarbonates, or whatever. And they used those to tincture medicine and to make the first household products to, for, you know, for uh, disinfection. 
So the latrines, which are toilets that were first developed in Kemet, they would use uh, limestone, which has calcium bicarbonate in it, for the stools, and they would use liquid uh, natron to make sure that the sewer system was clean. All right. So all this stuff was developed by your ancestors, and they knew what they were doing. So please don't take pills. So we teach our, our, our substances. Let me show you this so you can get this. And it's going to make sense when I come to melanin, which I'm going to jump right into. All right. All right, so this substance right here that you see right here is a bicarbonate. All right. This, this structure right here is, 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 is very important to, to uh, immunity. Right? You've been taught about your immune system that you know, neutrophils, macrophages, uh, phagocytes, all of these said varying types of uh, white blood cells are immunity. Carbon and oxygen, or carbon compounds and oxygen, are the immune system for black people, period. That's why the healthiest people are the people who eat fruit. The vegetables. And grains. If you, by the time you get the starches and flesh, you're already clogging your whole system up. All right, which is what most of us are doing. So let's let's go let's go ask some questions. Let's go ask them some some serious questions. Let's go back. That's that's Obama with his Food and Safety Modernization Act. I was just talking about, and the quote is pretty clear. The Department of Health and Human Services will require registration and payment of a fee by any, quote, person who manufactures, processes, packs, distributes, receives, holds, or imports an article of food. Individuals who partake in food handling without official registration are subject to a maximum 10-year prison sentence. So you can read this legislation, Food Safety and Modernization Act, and see they have been there. What's that about? Again, it's about control, and that's why we need to deal with our political status, which we're going to talk about tomorrow to obfuscate uh, those traps. So let's go right into our subject. All right, first thing is, we need to be teaching our children about the ecology of plants. All right, so these are my daughters in their plant nursery, and since they've been young, they've been learning about all of the plants that are around them. All right, just little herbs and things so they can identify, oh, that's burdock, oh, that's yellow dock. Oh, that's this, that's that, and that's for this, and we use that for that. And then it changes the mentality of the child. Instead of the abuse of letting them watch uh, Dora and Diego all day, where they're learning about other folk and their adventures. Because we haven't learned to master family structure, and somebody's working three jobs and they don't have time to talk to their children. That's an issue, all right? that is recurrent, that develops more dysfunction in each generation that comes. Because if this family is in that situation in this generation, then, and there's no solution, then it's going to be worse off economically, resource-wise, that means the next generation is going to be a little bit worse. Then your daughter comes home and says she's gay. Then the next generation gets a little bit worse. You know what I mean? Your son wants to have surgery to get breasts. And it's a slope. And then all, at the crest of all of this, they're being fed poisonous diets and poisonous culture. And it's a slope that we are sliding down as a people right now. All right, that's a reality. We're experiencing that as a people. And culture can heal those wounds. All right, so let's come to our, our, our first discussion. Now, if melanin is not important, why did this guy clone it? You know, black people is, we just shoot y'all down, y'all ain't nothing. Talmud says it's a curse to be black. Y'all the children of Ham. Y'all niggas are, are psychologically out of it, so. But this guy, John Powlett, a longtime member of research faculty in the Department of Dermatology at the Yale School of Medicine, he has wrote in over 200 peer-reviewed papers in the area of skin pigmentation and melanoma and is the past president of the Pan-American Society for Pigment Cell Research. So he's studying what's called melanogenesis. Have anybody ever read any of his peer-reviewed papers? Because he's writing about melanin, he's talking about you. 
and he don't have no melody. That's a problem. That means Yale, this Yale School of Medicine is spending millions of dollars for research on something, all right? And the board and directors, despite there might be a few of us maybe around, is of other people. What is their interest? Why would he go after that and patent it? That's your patent on synthetic melanin right there that he has. Why are you trying to patent melanin? Let me give you an idea how important melanin is, and then this might make some sense to you. How many people have ever heard of stealth technology? Stealth, stealth bombers and stealth. All right, so Lockheed Skunk Works, also known as Lockheed Martin, they develop all types of stealth technology and do so for a little while. What makes stealth different than other technologies when it comes to aircraft? Anybody know? Can't see it. Say it again? Can't see it. You can't see it. It's invisible. Does anybody know what makes it invisible? <coughs> Say it again? Does it have anything to do with the sunlight bouncing the, the dark carbon? Black of the carbon. Carbon. That's, that's the answer, carbon, is what makes it invisible. So to, to give you an idea, if you have a, a, a radar tower that's sending out signals, radio signals, when it hits an aircraft, it bounces off, and then we know, OK, there's somebody trying to in, you know, come into our space, our airspace. Right? They use this at airports for you know, planes or whatever, and then they use this in the military to find out somebody's trying to come in. What stealth does is stealth takes a carbon layer of graphene and places it all over the plane. And then after you place that carbon layer all over the plane, you know what happens to that signal when you try to get it to bounce off? It doesn't bounce off. It absorbs it. So you're invisible. So now they send the signals out. They can't see nothing. Then next thing you know, they're getting bombed. Saddam Hussein, Gaddafi, you're out of here. And then you see it's coming. But in order to do that, they had to get carbon to do that. And there's only two sources, three sources of carbon. You're going to get it out of the earth, out of plants, or out of people. And they're doing all three. Again, somebody figured out what makes you up is valuable, and then they use it for their system, which is wickedness, which they're very successful at. Right? That's what they're designed for. Don't be upset and surprised when white folks do wickedness. You know why? Because that's what they're designed for. So when we come in and we don't understand our systems and the laws that guide us, what happens? We start using somebody else's system. And then we start stumbling over ourselves. It's like, oh, this is a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. Because you haven't figured out your own design. And then use it systematically to come up with a result, militarily, economically, family-wise. Uh, all the other areas of your life should be based on systems. Right? So that's our problem. So this guy cloned you, basically. All right? They're not getting this melanin from nowhere, though. They have to get it from black people. And if you want to argue that white people have melanin, please. Don't, don't even start that argument. They don't have it. Literally, they don't have it. All right? So they're not getting it from, the, they're getting it from us. So that's why you have a Planned Parenthood building in your, in your vicinity, all right? As soon as that abortion happens, that's a commodity. That's melanin in there. Let's get it. And then we can sell the body parts and everything else. So again, what I'm trying to show you is that you are the economic basis for world systems. But in order for you to be a commodity for world systems, it is a requirement that we remain lack of full awareness of who we are. Excuse me. That means somebody has a somebody has a specific incentive to keep us stupid about ourselves. And in order to do that, they have to set up systems to block us from our self-awareness and intelligence or activate them. That's an investment. Like, how are we going to keep the black people stupid about themselves? Well, let's come up with the agencies to do that. And then we think that this is a, a that colonization and the output of what we're seeing is haphazard. That people haven't actually sat in rooms and planned it. 
So if you're not sitting in rooms and planning your development, what's happening? You're losing. That's just it. There's no, no, there's no mystery about it. If our community is not sitting, sitting and planning with the efficient information on a regular basis, you will lose. We will lose. So we can go back to our homes and turn on the Xbox 360 and turn on Comcast or whatever the light company and keep funding outside entities until we dissipate. Or we can say, well, wait a minute. How hard is it for us to get together on a regular basis to talk about our issues? That's not very hard. Okay. But in order to do that, you have to get rid of the things that block you. Now, I'm about to say some surprising things about things that block you. That's one of them, brothers. Value. Where is your value? With Becky? Why are you attracted to Becky? <coughs> All right? That's a psychological sickness. Now, this is, this is really a problem, a big one. Brothers don't want to admit that. They're all online on social media, inboxing Becky. And then black power during the daytime. At nighttime, you're chasing fungus. Yeah, that's Becky. She is contaminated. Every time you touch her, you get weaker. Remember the movie with Will Smith and the white girl? Yeah, hang on. I'm trying to tell you right there. Every time you mess with her, you get weak. And then, of course, then you got all these images of famous people, and they latched on to the fungus. And then, if I say what I'm saying, then people call me racist. Right? I'm a reverse racist. I'm prejudiced. We have the right to, everybody has a right to love. How you going to love a disease? Just asking the question. If you had cancer, you would say, oh, God, I'm so happy I got cancer. Anybody would say that? Anybody going to jump up and down and say, man, we need to have a party. I got cancer. <laughs> this is a lifetime opportunity. That's where they are. They're walking cancer. So why you, what's so attractive about that? All right? So as I keep going, you'll see why I'm saying what I'm saying. Then they're on the other side trying to be you, killing you. All right? So here he's taking melatonin one, trying to become you. Injections to uh, bleed off the nitrogen in the body, get more carbon into the body so he can go out in the sun and tan and do all other stuff. So now, 50, 100 years from now, you're not even going to know who's who. If you, your awareness is not turned on, this is the time where all of the awareness is supposed to be turning on. Because the, the subtle envy that I'm describing, that's in the culture of the economy, okay, we're going to take your body parts and we're going to make it into something valuable for us. Okay, we're going to take your blood and we're going to use it for regeneration. We're going to set up companies to do it. All right. We're going to do, we're going to take body parts and make technology for military. They're telling you indirectly, I wish I was you, but I'm not. So now I'm going to become you by taking from you. Or I'm going to figure out, maybe I can become you. I'm not at my, I'm actually not mad at them. If I was white, I would want to be black too. <laughs> I would look around like, yeah, something's wrong with us. The black people, they got all, they got everything. They can dance, they can sing. It's happy, even though we terrorizing them. They still happy. I think we want to come over here and be with y'all. Matter of fact, figure out how to yeah, clone that. Stick, yeah, stick it right here. Let me sit out in the sun and see if I can be good. So we see what's happening. All right, we don't have to guess. They're trying to become you. And then you try to become them. Look, Sammy Sosa. <laughs> Sammy Sosa. You still look like this. Now looks like this. How do you get like that? He took a substance called Vismia and Phytic Acid. Vismia and Phytic Acid are both bleaching agents. So where's Phytic Acid at? 
It's in your meats. It's in all the rice that you eat. Alright? It's in all the, the nuts that you eat. Macadamia, Brazil. So when you, if you're going to eat those things, you need to learn how to soak them to reduce the amines and break the phytic acid up. Because you're just eating nuts going crazy. Alright? So there's certain places. And this is involuntary on your right hand side. And we call that vitiligo. Vitiligo is when your amine count gets so high, your white blood cell population increases and they start literally eating the compromised melanin. The melanin is at that point compromised, energetically and chemically. All right? It's surrounded in, by acidic waters. All right? Or in some cases, uh, fluids that are alkaline but they're high in ammonia. Okay? So we gotta clarify that. Because just being alkaline is not healthy. You can eat some alkaline mushrooms. Do that for 30 days. Mono foods of mushrooms. I don't know. Dr. Savi said we can eat mushrooms. Dr. Savi is not going to eat mushrooms for 30 days straight. It'll prove what mushrooms really are, which they're not even a plant. They're fungus. Any food that you eat, you should be able to eat it by itself and maintain. If I have some apples, I can eat apples for 30 days, no problem. I'll be healthier, shining, you know, whatever. Go ahead, brother. Vitiligo, can it be reversed since it's uh, alkaline color? Anything can be reversed. Any health malady can be reversed. Yeah, this can be reversed by changing the nutrition and then finding out other factors that gave rise to it. <coughs> Uncle Ruckus said he had re vitiligo. <laughs> re vitiligo, oh my God. Uncle Ruckus is something else. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't messing with Uncle Ruckus. Look. Uncle Ruckus is out. Alright, all right, so look, I'm gonna give you testimony from their first fruitarian of the 20th century. Arnold Eric. He wrote this book, Mucusless Diet Healing System. Anybody got this book? One person? Two people got it? Just two people? Okay. What does the book say? This is a white man talking. <coughs> In my first published article, I promulgated the gigantic idea that the white race is an unnatural, a sick, a pathological one. First, the color skin pigment is lacking melanin due to a lack of coloring mineral salts. All right, that's trace minerals. Second, the blood is continually overfilled by white blood corpuscles, also known as white blood cells, mucus, waste, and uh, with white color. Therefore, the white appearance of the entire body the skin of the white man are constipated by white dry mucus. His entire system is filled up and filled out with it. No wonder that he looks white and pale and anemic. Everybody knows that an extreme case of paleness is a bad sign. When I appeared with my friend in a public air bath after having lived for several months on a mucusless diet with sun baths, we looked like Indians and people believed that we belonged to another race. This condition was doubtless due to the great amount of red blood corpuscles and the great lack of white blood corpuscles. So that's it. Now, the last part is important because he said, you talk about red blood cells, which when you learn and you go to school in your anatomy courses, your pre-MD courses or if you're taking PhD, they tell you that the blood is made in the bones from the, the uh, bone marrow and the, um, the various types of um, uh, cells, bone cells that convert themselves into red blood cells. That is what you call, or what we call, labeled in the Aboriginal Medical Association, a skeletal hemorrhage. The blood is not supposed to be made in the bones. By the time blood is being made in the bones, it's because you are not making enough red blood cells in the place that you're supposed to make them. So the body is flooding the, 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 uh, the bone marrow with signals and hormones to produce blood to keep the body in some type of health. The blood is supposed to be made in the intestines and the liver from the food that you eat. Say that again. The blood is supposed to be made in the intestines and the liver from the food that you eat. And there's only one cell that can become to, can make the conversion path to a blood cell. And that is a plant cell. Period. There's no other, nothing. Nothing else on earth can do that. So if you want to increase any blood condition, you have to get the right heirloom-based vegetables inside of your body in order to do that. 
If you're not doing that, then you have a problem in your blood, anemia, all types of other cascade of problems, and it means every other system in your body is off, and that also means you're psychologically sick. Everybody that has a physical health malady has a psychological issue that goes along with it because they said that they don't know their culture. They don't know how to protect the temple that they're walking around in. So this is your intestines. See, this is the part. People, when they come to a city, they want to hear about nationality, treasury accounts, how to discharge debts. So tomorrow, this room will be filled. Everybody going to be here tomorrow. That's nationality. But to come talk about this, which is the responsibility to get you in the right shape so when you get information, you disseminate it to departments to make a functional, cohesive body, constitution, organization, system. You see? That kind of information, niggas don't want to hear it. Right? Niggas want the fat back. That's what they want. They may be saying, fat back. Show me how to get this white man money. That's all I want to hear. All right? And that's why we stay stuck in cyclical problems. Intestines. Really simple. You put something in these. It goes down into the walls of these. You have these little hairs right here called a villa. So what happens? If you eat, let's say, some dandelion leaves, the salad, cucumbers, tomatoes, goes inside here, and those little plant cells absorb right into the uh, portal vein, and once they absorb into the portal vein, they go right to the liver, via the portal vein. This guy right here, this blue guy, all these capillaries, they go right to the liver. Right? The liver is the master melanin and detox organ. It's going to make sure that these plant cells develop into uh, red blood cells and are tagged with hormones to be sent to other areas in the body so that if there's organs that are, that are compromised, the cells are compromised, it can give those, the red blood cells to regenerate the tissues. So black blood is the stem cell, period. And we get that from the plants. All right? But what happens when you eat Cheetos? What happens when you drink a hug? What happens when you drink a Sprite, a Coca-Cola? All right, potato salad, macaroni and cheese. What happens when you do that? This organ gets clogged. This layer right here has a pile of mucus and slime on it that's like Elmer's glue. All right? And now you're not absorbing nutrients, and this is all clogged up and blocked. You're not making enough red blood cells, so you are aging at an accelerating rate. All right? Achy knee syndrome, elbows hurting, feel like you can't get up out of the bed in the morning, a big inner tube around your waist. All of these are signs and symptoms of, of toxicity, all right? So our job is to say, well, we got to get rid of this and almost glue it, this, this pus and mucus that's inside of your body. Here's, here's the answer, all right? This is where we have our problem, man. I'm going to decipher this and then we can go into, um, we can go into some clarity on the subject. It's 12 o'clock now, so we're making good time. Our thesis is that natural melanin, right, can function at optimal levels and keep the body perpetually healthy and ageless as long as nitrogenous compounds are not into, thrown and given, or given into the body. And nitrogenous plant based and other things. As long as those things are not in the body, you're healthy. Okay, so that means that some of the theories that we have are off. Because nitrogens make amino acids. And some of you are taking amino acid supplements because you were told to do that. And the African body is allergic to amino acids. Then, amino acids make protein. So you know you got to be crazy. Nigga, you know, you, you got to be crazy. Everybody knows the body needs protein. The black body is allergic to protein. That's my thesis. I'm going to prove it with something simple that you should have learned when you were 13 about the, the cycle that goes on in the body. This cycle is called the urea cycle. Right? Really simple. What is the urea cycle? The urea cycle, also known as the orthonine cycle, is a cycle of biochemical reactions occurring in many animals that produces urea, NH2, 2, and CO, from ammonia, 
NH3. All right. This cycle was the first metabolic cycle discovered. Now, to give you an idea why we're isolating ammonia, you ever see white people outside when it's real cold and they got shorts on and they ain't cold? Anybody know, want to get a, a scientific explanation for that? Because you see them walking around and it's, it's coming up late February, March. Y'all got there with their shorts running and jogging somewhere. Why, why y'all? It's the ammonia. Now, take a glass of water, put it in the freezer. Take a glass of ammonia, put it in the freezer next to it. The water's going to freeze. The ammonia is not. If it freezes, it's going to take really long for it to freeze. So its freeze point is, 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 is longer than water. Right? Why am I saying that? Because white people have more ammonia in their body and you have more water. Okay? So now, what's different between the water and the ammonia? The water has what you call a negative ionic charge. Right? It's electrical. So it, again, responds to its environment. Right? If it's cold on the outside, okay, now I'm absorbing whatever's on the outside. The ammonia has a positive charge. So a positive charge in the ammonia and a positive charge in the atmosphere of the cold are canceling each other out. So Becky is not cold. She out there like, what? She's a polar bear. Polar bears like the cold. The brown bears live down where it's warm, eating honey and berries. This is real simple. So the ammonia. All right. All right. So in mammals, the urea cycle takes place primarily in the liver and to a lesser extent in the kidneys, the two blood generators and detox organ. That's where the cycle is taking place at. So now this is happening inside. When you get up in the morning, you pee, that's the urea cycle. That pee is cleaning out the liver, the blood, the kidneys are cleaning the blood. All right, organisms that cannot easily and quickly remove ammonia in H3 usually have to convert it to some other substance, which we call a urea. How is that done? Like urea or uric acid, which are much less toxic. What, what is added to ammonia to reduce its toxicity to make it into urea? What, what is added? Whatever is added to it neutralizes toxicity. So let's look at it. Insufficiency of the urea cycle, which means you don't have the thing inside of you to neutralize the ammonia, occurs in some genetic disorders. And in liver failure, your liver fails, you're out of here. You shot in the liver, you got two hours, you're gonna bleed out. You can't make any more blood. So the liver is important. The result of liver failure is accumulation of what? What does that say? The result of liver failure is the accumulation of what? Nitrogenous waste. Nitrogenous waste. Mainly ammonia. So nitrogen is the atom of ammonia. Besides these positive <coughs> hydrogen ions. Here it is again. Here's the nitrogen. All right. Excuse me. That should be off. All right. Mainly nitrogenous waste. Mainly ammonia. Which leads to hepatic encephalopathy. All right. So we've established that the body is trying to detox nitrogen. What does it use to add to ammonia and the amines to neutralize it? Carbon and oxygen. Carbon and oxygen are your immune system, period. The more carbon you have, the stronger your immune system. The blacker you are, the stronger your immune system. The more external carbon you put inside of your body, the more you're improving your immune system. The external carbon is carbohydrates. Fruit. Period. Not the polysaccharides, noodles and Raymond noodles, those aren't carbohydrates. They get listed and grouped with carbohydrates. So these white folks come and tell you, do the not, no carb diet. All right? Or you're trying, you're on diabetes, you've got diabetes, and they tell you, no sugars, no fruit. It just took away your immune system. You do need to get away from the noodles and the rice and all of those compounds, but the fruit, sugar, you actually need. So nitrogen is toxic, carbon, that black stuff, and oxygen neutralizes it. Carbon and oxygen, which are the components of melanin, actually neutralizes um, 
the toxicity. So here you have what's called a carboxylate salt. This is the basis of melanin. And when you have an amino acid in your body, all the amino acid is an amine attached to this carbon. This is what I mean by compromised melanin. Because right now, metabolically, <coughs> we're getting too, much, too, much, too many amines inside of our diet, and it's producing what we call amino acids. Amino acid is only compromised melanin. So by you going to the store and taking amino acids, you're adding more nitrogen, more nitrogen to your, to your body. No, you need this part off, which you find this in fruits. Okay? That's the chemistry. So we're literally trying to chop it off. Is that why soy is the body? Yep, soy is high in nitrogen and phytic acid. So a whole bunch of stuff that's high in nitrogen and phytic acid that we're about to identify. Soy is high in a few things. All right? And soy has the gay gene in it. CYP19 gene. Go ahead, bro. Toxic. Toxic. Not, not only is it toxic, the waters that they are cultured in are toxic. So you're going to get high metal, cadmium, mercury. You're, I can test somebody right now. If you eat a lot of fish, I guarantee your mercury level is going to be going to be up. All right. If we lived in a place where we had fresher waters, I say maybe. But right now, living in the hells of North America, if you can put it down, put it down. Your health is going to be that much better. All right? All right, so look, dialysis. It ain't hard. This is what they do in dialysis. They run the blood out of the body through a pump, through these dialysis tubes to do what? Get rid of waste. These wastes are nitrogen. They're dumping out the nitrogen. Then what they do is they get solutions with bicarbonate in it and put it back into the blood because you're not doing it through your own diet. Think about that. So now your kidneys are failing because your kidneys can't, they're not working anymore to clean the blood. Dialysis. Dialysis is doing what you should be doing in your own nutrition. Really simple. This is simple. There you go, your hysterectomies. That's what it looks like. These are nothing but big pockets of nitrogen and sulfur that develop inside of the womb of a woman through metabolic processes or through inheriting weak chromatin or chromosomes from her, uh, her matrilineal side. And these can be resolved in a matter of weeks, but you can't resolve them through, you know, the way that we've been taught. So, let's go to the spiritual side of this so we can really get this. All right. You and I are born with melanin. Why? It is the signature that you have a covenant with the creator of this universe and you are supposed to be on this earth as a maintainer of the earth. That's it. That's why you look like what you look like. That is the science behind it. And with that comes a system of laws. All right? So I'm showing this right here because this is astronomy. This is the cosmology or cosmogony of melanin. We are right here. We're right here going around the sun. This is what you call the Milky Way galaxy. And at the core, you have this area that's called the Sagittarius A portal. Okay? So the sun, every 25,000 years, is going around this galactic core. What's at the galactic core? Well, when you go to the galactic core to see what's at it, check it out. Look at what you get. You get 16 stars that are revolving around what could only be considered a black hole. All right. So now this black hole, let's go back because I want to get, I want to defeat your, your, your any discussions on science that you might. So there's a black something there that you can't see that's making millions of stars and planets and other things move. In fact. You live on one of the objects that is making something move. And it's upholding through some type of gravitational force and power all of these stars, everything that you see. Orion, everything. How does that happen? According to modern physics, the gravitational power of a star is pretty strong. Because a star can make other orbits, I mean things orbit. Planets, asteroids. How is it that 
according to what we can see. Just according to what we can see, empty black space is making some other objects move. Explain that for me, please. Go to your highest physicist, whoever he may be, she may be, Stephen Hawkins or whatever. So they got all these theories. They have the theory about black holes, they have the theory about the singularity, they got this theory about this, theory about that. Okay. Then Albert Einstein got smart and he started making his studies in the unified field theory and black body radiation. And Einstein kind of, he, you know why he's important? You want to know why Einstein is important? Anybody know why? Anybody have any idea why Einstein is important to modern phys phys uh, physics? Yeah, he well, he was trying to find what's called the unified field theory. What's holding everything together? What gravitational power is holding everything together? So it led him to studying what's called black body radiation. Okay. And then the reason why he's famous is because he made a proposal that had been never made. And that proposal was, when we look out and we see space, <coughs> and we see stars, and the spaces between the stars, we think about that space as nothing. His theory was, no, the space is actually something. And that something that it is, is what's holding everything together. Thus, his studies into the singularity and black holes. In order for it to have its progressions, is rotation, is revolution, and to move all the planets. This means all life in the known galaxy is dependent, and universe. Let me stop there, because I'm going to go further and, and knock down some stuff that we believe in. For instance, let's, let's do a sidebar. You ever been watching CNN or something, and they say, oh, we discovered a new star, and a, or excuse me, a new planet. And they show you a picture of some blue or green thing, and it's way over here. What you don't get is that that is a Photoshop image. They actually haven't seen the planet, unless it's in the Milky Way. What they've seen is something called a perturbation. A perturbation is, okay, we see the star that's been moving for a while, and we've been recording, and now it's starting to wiggle. So that means there must be another outside force that's causing that wiggle. So we have a system of formulas to kind of measure how big the thing is that's making it wiggle. And if it comes within a certain range, we say, oh, there's a planet there. We just can't see it. So what did the JPL do? JPL makes up a picture, Photoshop, and then they put it on CNN. That's literally how it works. All right? Or they have other technology where they're sending out radio waves and they get feedback from those radio waves and say, that must be a galaxy there, even though we can't see it because of how big the feedback they were getting. No galaxy, what do we do? We Photoshop an image. This is galaxy such and such. Do you know that there's only one visible galaxy in the known universe and it's the Milky Way? You can literally go outside in the winter and the summer and see the armbands out in space. So this is the only known galaxy. So off of that sidebar, if there's one point in space that's making everything else move, that means it has power and force and authority over all of those stars, planets, even the entities on it. Because it can make you move, you can't make it move. And we all moving in here right now. If that stop working, this earth will stop spinning, there'll be no air. Anybody did. So the thing that's making everything in the universe move is black. Can we say more? And then everybody who's a mutant on the planet hates black. Think about this now. They definitely got a problem with the sun. We ain't start there yet. So above you had the Sagittarius A portal. All right. Then these 16 stars generate a certain level of energy. And scientists are studying this right now. How are these stars revolving around nothing? There's 16 of them. But when we know, when we go to what? Different divination systems, we see what's called biomimicry. You know what biomimicry is? You study something in nature or the heavens, 
and you extract the mathematics of it and you reproduce it in ritual. And in the reproduction in ritual, you tap into the source that gave rise. So we've given different names to that source, right? Olodumare, Allah, the creator, or some type of creator in the system, all right? And that creator was supposed to originally, before the hybrids start taking our stuff, all right? And they jump, every time we pray something, they jump on them. Now it's theirs. You have this in the body. You have the first 16 pluripotent cells that surround this black fluid that eventually makes the spinal column in the brain. Same thing. So nature is consistent. The job of black people on this planet is to be consistent with nature and to reject anything that is not natural because to accept it is to do what? First of all, you're accepting an illusion. Because whatever you're accepting is not permanent in character. And your power is in accepting things that are permanent, absolute in character. So instead of eating macaroni that doesn't grow on a tree, have a salad. Those leaves have been on this planet since the planet has been here. Why not? That's a consistent meal. That's a meal rooted in natural law. That's a meal that's going to make you healthier. You're going to feel better. I just like macaroni. Okay. So look, we need a macaroni law. Can we do that? I mean, you're going too far. Ain't nobody going to be in the lecture. We got a law for stop for stop signs and nobody's there. And you get a ticket from a fictitious entity and we all stop at it. We said we do it for safety. Yeah, we do. That's sensible. But what happens when you stop and then somebody makes an accusation, take it, that you didn't stop? Then they make you go into a kangaroo court, right, where there's no prosecutor, the judge is prosecuted, which is a conflict of interest, and now you gotta pay the ticket if you wanna continue to have the operating privilege to move on the roads created by the fiction. They got you in a whole cycle of disrespecting, or excuse me, of acknowledging fictitious entities as authority. That's, that becomes a psychological issue. You see what I'm saying? Now you got Santa Claus. Okay? Then you worship people who never lived. Well, there's no evidence that they lived. And now you look at yourself in the mirror, and what is your communication with yourself? All the power is outside of you. So these people have engineered a psychotropic uh, ditch to keep you in psychologically and bust your stick. That's what parasites do. So look. Oh, just on the on the medicine stuff, the, don't don't get when I brought this book out, alright, I had copies of it. The first person I gave copies was to Minister Inc. Then we got Brother Diallo to get some copies. And then we started talking about it on our first tour. This is the proof that these folk were eating you. They called it mumia. Not like mumia and Abu Jabal. Mumia meaning the tar melanin from, from mummies was a part of what was sold on the market as medicine. Let's invade the tombs and rob these black people of their bodies and let's chop it up into medicine and sell it. Middle Ages. This was the pharmaceutical industry. They were doing it then. They still do the same thing now. They're taking your blood, putting it into aspirin. They want to eat you. What human being wants to eat another group of human beings? All right. Consistently, they they were doing this was almost a thousand years ago. They were doing. They still doing the same thing. You know what that shows me? That shows me there's a subconscious operation of your lack that you are addressing by tapping into something that we have, that you don't have. And no matter what, as long as you exist, you're going to continue to try to do that. To have an existence. If you don't do that, you don't have an existence. You be And this was their way of coming out of the dark ages. After this, after eating you, it went through a renaissance. That's a hell of a meal. 
Mm. White folks just start getting enlightened from eating black people. Then universities and stuff popping up. Alright? I ain't trying to feed y'all like that. Alright, so symbols. See? Look at the symbols. What is this? We walk around with it like it's some Star Wars stuff. I'm gonna zap you with my unk. I got the copper plated coal unk. It's an organ in the brain. Look, this is the organ that takes blood flow to all of the lobes. Frontal lobe, right? Temporal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital, occipital lobe. This is an oxygenated brain, which is a healthy brain. So the unk is a sign of oxygen. All right? The breath. So which plate has oxygen? Now, which plate are you going to eat today? Somebody here in here is going to go home and commit suicide. Somebody's gonna do it. Because the parasites are hungry. So this is what we do. We say, okay, the parasites are hungry. You gotta fill out, figure out how to kill them. You gotta remove them from your space. Separation is the only solution, not integration. You can't integrate with the parasites. So now we gotta cut this guy out. We gotta get over here a little bit more and gradually get all the way over here to that's all the way we're doing. So don't have an onk on, and you're going to do this. That's an oxymoron. You got the big onk chain, and you got, you got fighters. <laughs> Getting it in, right? Ain't that something? That's what we're doing. That's, 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 look. All right, so a, 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 a biological breakdown, this is the mitochondria, and these, these spin. There's a roller and a stator, all right? So I was talking about nanometers before, and at 380 nanometers of cycles per second of motion, no disease can e exist inside of the mitochondria, the cell cytoplasm, or the cell itself. That's the vibration that the cell is supposed to be operating on. All right, so let's see what, what the, and the mitochondria are the fuel, the engine of, of the uh, of the body. So what types of food I had? Oh, I don't have it in these slides. What I had in the slides, and it's in the book, was an experiment that was done by a white scientist named Fritz Pop, where he tested foods with a photomultiplier. So he took some cucumbers, he took some potatoes, he took other stuff, and what he found is that the um, the cucumbers had a vibration in it that exceeded the speed of light. And he named the particles in them biophotons, which means when a plant goes through photosynthesis, it's capturing the vibration of the light frequency in it. So therefore, when you eat what you're eating, you're eating sunlight. Ra. Amun Ra. All right? And what he also found out and this is the, the, the details are in the book, is that um, cancer or disease cannot exist with, when that frequency is present. While uh, you're sick, is because you, you poison yourself. All right? Or they got slick, and they said, okay, you can have fruits and vegetables, we're going to take the seeds out. How are they able to do that? Why are they doing it? Because they want the farmers, they're hustling. They want the farmers to have to come every year with a new crop to come to them. Now I control the seeds, right? I control everything. You can't even eat without my permission. And what am I doing here? Everybody waiting on a chip to be put in, right? Oh, the RFID is coming. The Illuminati about to put the chip. Y'all seen the movie Kingsman? They had the chips in the people. They go, they're already chipping you. That's what genetic modification of food is about. These are little nanobots in food that can change the course of history which is make new people. The generation that's coming out now, they're almost chromatose, some of them. It's like, well, wait a minute. You feel like you don't have a soul. What's happening to you? 
all right? Manganese inhibitors, carbon and manganese inhibitors, which means you can't produce a seed. You eat this stuff and you start getting infertile. Or they get you with these guys. This is why you need to try to buy your food organic. You go get the non-organic spinach, right? All of it has recombinant DNA in it. This is the CPN21 gene, E. coli. They have breakouts on this stuff all the time. Right? So they're putting viruses inside of it through the pesticides or just genetically engineering it into it because they're not dealing with non-heirloom seeds and the pests are destroying their crops. So in order to, to destroy the pests, we need to put something in the food to stop the pests. Well, heirloom-based foods, I grow them all the time, no pests bother them. Just because of the vibration of the plants. If they do, they come and just take a little bite and keep it moving. All right? So these folks are manufacturing. And this is where we're gonna stop at. This guy was the guy who developed nitrogenous fertilizers for growing foods. Look at his name. What's his name? Say his name. Anybody wanna say his name? Justice. Vaughn? Big lie. Lie big. Lie big. Hey, you got a lie big. I can't trust you with a name like that. Lie big. So now, all the farmers, right, are following his techniques. All right? So we were going to pay a farmer for our society to do some work, and he's trying to introduce nitrogen to fertilizer. Like, son, like we got all the information. Why can't you figure out how to do something else? Here we go. We're following your opinions again. All right. So these are some of the types of foods that we have mentioned in the book. These are people who live. This guy is lived 256 years old, recorded in China. All right. This was published in the New York Times. All right. He and he did. He, he lived that long by eating a certain way and practicing in martial arts. What we call baguazhang. Baguazhang is a system of forms and movements. So he, he basically said, I did the movements and the exercises for 120 years. And I ate basically fruits and vegetables and berries. And he lived in a place that had the second highest ox oxygen content on the planet. That place is, we call the Himalayas. The first highest high oxygen content is in the Congo. The most pure oxygen content. You have it where the oldest people are, right? Pretty simple. So we affected the atmosphere and we are synced, synced together. So, where are we going with this presentation? Last pre part of the presentation that's important. Besides the nitrogen, we have this thing called aromatase, right? Aromatase is a, I call it a fungus, but they call it a biological enzyme. The technical name is called CYP19 gene. It is the gene that if you're a man and you want to grow some breasts or something, they give you the aromatase pills. And it converts your testosterone into estrogens. Women, it converts your natural progesterone, the natural hormone, into estrogen. Estrogen is not a natural female hormone. So if you got PMS, you're sick. There's no way you're supposed to be having PMS. In traditional society, if you had PMS, you had to fast. They put you out outside of the community for a few days, and you had to fast. So this society is supposed to be so free for men and women free to be freaks, free to be fools, free to ignore the system of laws that is guaranteed to make you successful, right, is by design parasitic and dysfunctional. <coughs> and so aromatase mediates sex change in these directions. Let me ask a question on that. Are you familiar with the work of uh, Dr. Tyrone Hayes? No. The uh, altruism pesticides? I've heard of altrazine. I haven't heard of that particular individual, but that altrazine is uh, is high in aromatase uh, aromatase factors. Right. When I mean, you change the sex from frogs to uh, male frogs to female frogs, with that altrazine? Oh yeah, yeah, you can do that. He was hired by uh, a pharmaceutical company who was producing this pesticide, and uh, they were trying to cover his work up. And they threatened him, but they, they wanted to get him fired from uh, Berkeley for 
or his literature. He's on the internet where you're talking about. The, uh, I'll, look him up. I'll look him up tonight. I never heard of the name, but um, I heard of the, the substance. And that substance is used, you know, in, in sex change in animals and people. So, so what are we saying? We're saying we're under assault, all right? We're saying we're under assault. Check it out. See that symbol, right? Remember I told you it was oxygen, right? Check that out. That's 3,500 years ago. Black people knew that already. She got the onk to her nose. Why does she have the onk to her nose? Because in the neural crest, you read, lead right to the olfactory system, and the ions in the air actually catalyze um, what's called the gonadotropin releasing hormone cycle, GNRH. GNRH uh, stimulates the pineal, hypothalamus, and the pituitary. It has two functions. One is to catalyze melanogenesis and melanin-stimulating hormone. The second issue is to make sure that the gender factors are in order, the hormones, testosterone, the things that lead to production of testosterone and progesterone. How people knew this. So a, a, a body that lacks what it's supposed to have starts to degenerate, okay? And these <coughs> folks are just trying to figure this stuff out now we knew this for thousands of years. Look, this is what happens to you, brother, when you start eating soy every day. Gang of common steel. All right? I have other factors. I'm not going to go over all of it, but we have stuff about the vaccines, what they're putting in. They're putting cancer inside of vaccines. Matter of fact, i got to show it to you just so you can see it. Look, check this out. This was the H1N1. This is the extract on the H1N1. All right, you can see the patent numbers we have here. All right. When they, everybody remember H1N1? Yeah. All right. The big scare, the world scare. But look, they're telling you what's in it. They're putting um, <coughs> kidneys from African green monkeys. But the, the monkeys are not in Africa. There's a colony of them that scientists put in Barbados for the extraction of their kidney parts to make pharmaceutical medicines. So they're injecting, extracting something from the kidneys of a, uh, a clone monkey, monkey clones, in order to put in what GlaxoSmithKline Beecham is giving flu vaccinations and all this other stuff. And we're taking the shots. We don't know what's in them. Well, let me tell you what's in them. Rabbit kidney, human amnion fluid, all right? Human carcinoma, which is cancer of the lungs. Why are you putting cancer inside of somebody's body? The theory is, oh, it builds immunity because the white blood cells are going to identify it and eat it up and keep an antibody. Now, we just went over what immunity is, so we just throw that straight in the trash can, all right? There's other things in here. They tested these on mice. You know what the mice did? They ate each other. So now, here's what I'm proposing. I'm proposing black people can't wake up until they recognize why they're black. I'm talking about why you, you can't wake up until you know why you were made that way. Based on the laws of your creator, your ancestors, and nature. You have to recognize that. Until you recognize that, the things that have been marketed to you tell you you're that way because you're cursed. Nigga, you got nappy hair. You ugly. If you want to look good, get a perm. Do something with that nappy hair. Program. So now, I gotta look like Beyonce, if I wanna look pretty. See, my daughter my daughter looking at Beyonce, she said, oh, well, I wanna be pretty like Beyonce. And Beyonce look like a white woman. Oh, why you just a Jay-Z white? That's not a diss, I just don't like it. I'm just saying she looks like a white woman. She represents white culture and white standards. And she's willing to do what? Throw you the rabbit, carrot, and you follow it. You make them wealthier. 
I'm not hating. I'm just saying that everybody should be accountable. All right. So you gotta learn why you black. The second thing you gotta learn is what is culture? What is culture? Because then you can identify democracy as the biggest disease on the planet. Think about this. When we go over this tomorrow, we're going to see because democracy is based on the full faith and credit of the people. Faith and credit. They want your money and they want your belief. That's the biggest religion and heist on the planet. And their job is to go sell it to everybody all across the planet. Become more democratic. No, we need to figure out how to become more lawful. Period. Based on a system that we have. And we can't just depend on ancient system. You know why? Because they had a chink, some of them had a chink in their armor. We extract systems from our own comprehension of our design and what's good for us. And if our comprehension is lacking a little bit, then guess what? We get thrown this curveball called white folks and we say, look, there's a chink. So just studying something 10,000 years ago is not saying it's good just because it existed 10,000 years ago. It means that there's some parts that are good we have to study where we fell at. And then lastly, as we get into um, the physical, we have to learn what nutrition is. We got to learn what nutrition is. Because we, we live in a hostile environment. You go down the street, what do you see? You don't see uh, markets that are good for us. You see, go to our markets, you see, damn, where's the organic food at? Nowhere. That's by design. We have to do something different about that, and we have to come together as a community on a regular basis. That's why you see me going all across the country. I'm trying to inspire people. Why don't y'all meet up and talk about it? If y'all have an organization, an institution, have cyclical meetings where people can come in and discuss the information. I'm too busy. Okay, well, you've been too busy. Stay on that slide, slide board. White folks got something for us. If we don't want to come together and solve our problems, which we have the infinite capacity to do. We already proved that in every epoch of time in history, that we have all of the mechanics to defeat anything that's adver adverse to us. We already do it. Hell, look at, we did dysfunction and they still can't get rid of us. We're in agreement with the programming and they're having a hard time getting rid of us. A real hard time. As a matter of fact, they're stuck like, damn, it's just, I don't know what to do with it. So it's our job to figure out. Let's open it up for some question and answer. Any question you have on health, anything science related or whatever, we can ask that. Go ahead. Yeah, I got a few to ask you. Um, can you say anything about candida growth, especially in regards to a, a vegetarian or fruitarian? Do you still have to take the detox for candida? If you're eating fruits and vegetables on a daily basis, you don't need you don't need that. In the beginning, when you start making your transition, I recommend supplementation probably for about a six month period. When you're taking certain herbs to help reduce the cravings and stay on the regimen. But after you've been on the regimen for six months and you pretty much learn how to prepare foods, most of them um, that you want to prepare in areas where it's warm or times where it's warm, uh, non-cooked foods. And then of course, when you, know, you get colder temperatures, you can use your grains and other things to make some soups and quinoas and other things like that. Um, but yeah, you, you don't you don't need you don't need can can't continue to take a candida cleanse. And if you're gonna take a candida cleanse, it has to be based on the principles that we laid out. Alright? There's certain if you're taking pills, you ain't cleaning no candida. How you gonna clean candida with something that don't have water? Can't do it. Alright, so cleansing is cleansing the intestines, the liver, kidneys. That's a, that's, that, those are your detox organs, period. If you're not approaching that, then you have an issue. So let me say something about that. I'm glad you said that. Let me say something about that. Because one of the things that happens is we make dietary transition and we don't maybe not have the knowledge of how to repair some of the damage that we've made or caused. So check this out. This is a formula for you, and hopefully you can see this. I'll make it bigger if it's too small. This is something to help you get your liver back in water because after you do damage to the liver you actually have to give it some attention in order <coughs> to maintain some type of uh, stability in that organ of health I thought I had that in here let me see 
I had, I had the formula for alchemy, the basic formula. I have some alchemy in here today, which is a liver detox, cell detox substance that we sell. But I want to show this last slide that I had. Right here. So these are some elements that you can take inside of your body that will help you. Milk thistle and turmeric are very good because they have selenium, which is one of the important structures of, uh, of melanin itself, selenium-based atom or molecular structure. And it will help get the liver back in the proper shape. And how you know the liver is not in proper shape is when you start getting these rolls around your waist. That's a sign of excess nitrogen and um, estrogen build up in the body. So when the liver is healthy, it burns. It's an organ of metabolism. It burns up all the lipids in the waist. Okay? So that's something that you can take right there to help with that process. You said turmeric and what? Turmeric, right here. Everything right here. Turmeric, milk, thistle, dandelion, burdock, lemons to uh, catalyze breaking up some of that starch paste that gets inside of your intestines. Ginger, cayenne, and some of the other, you know, some other things there. Those are some good elements to get together. What's the best way to take it? Uh, you, you said not in a pill form, so how would you take it? Tea form? Yes. Yeah. You are taking a tea or a tincture form. Tincture is when you soak it over a long period of time in some substance mm -hmm. to catalyze uh, intensity, make it stronger. And or you can just take the substance itself. If you get some turmeric powder, just sprinkle a little bit of some warm water. Put some linen in. Make it out of a, a, a fluid substance so it can so you can uh, so you can absorb it. That's what I was gonna ask you. What's the difference of actually soaking it or if you're like drinking water while you take it? I mean You should you should absorb it into the water. Which means if you're taking a pill, don't say I drunk some water with the pill and no, I know. You want to absorb it to create a chemical reaction where you have binding between the substance and the water. Not in your body, but outside, so by the time it goes in your body, your body doesn't have to do any work to catalyze that. So that's where the uh, putting it, making it into like a tea come in because you're kind of... Okay. Yeah, you put it in a pre-absorbent state, so your body has to do no work to absorb it. As soon as the body has to do work to absorb something and then try to extract minerals, you're already at a deficit, an energy deficit. It would be good for curing any problem. If you were inside the, the lecture, we, we came in a little bit late, but we talked about the pathology of disease. In order to have any disease in the body, you must have a dysfunctional liver and kidneys. So, it's 20,000 diseases on the planet. You can just go through naming all of them. And when you track what is actually happening, what you have is an accumulation of nitrogen in a place through taking it in orally, breathing it in or something. Nitrogen, particular nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. Those are your catalysts for disease. And they build bigger compounds. So those three, they can localize in the brain, all right? And you can have dementia, you can have- Parkinson's. Uh, yeah, exactly, Parkinson's disease. You can have any of those, all right? They can localize in the pancreas and you got diabetes. They can localize in the, uh, in the muscles and you get rheumatoid and, and the joints, arthritis. So how disease manifests in your body is based on your design. And you can study your birth chart. That's it's kind of a little bit more advanced, but you can study your birth chart to learn how that happens. But it will definitely help with methadone and any other problem. Go ahead, bro. Two quick questions. When you say that about eating nuts, like your almonds, you have to soak them first. I'm saying that nuts, nuts, let me decide what a nut is. A nut comes in a seed that is uniformular or diploid inside of a shell, all right? So it's different. watermelon seeds and sunflower seeds are not the same as nuts. So those nuts, in my estimation, were not designed for human consumption, except in emergency situations. And the high phytic acid is there, phytic acid being a, a, a mineral that binds the minerals inside of your body, which stops melanin production. So nuts, first of all, nuts are no good. But if you're going to do them, 
then you soak them. The reason why you're soaking them is so, so they can absorb some water to make the minerals bioavailable in them and to uh, break up the nitrogen from being an NH bond to an NO, NO2 or NO3 bond. That's why you get gas. That's why you get gas. gas. Beans and nuts give you gas. Beans and all? Yeah. Be all the beans are phytic acid based. So you you I recommend those for people who are transitioning off of certain things. So I give that as transitional diet. If you've been eating meat and flesh, I'll give you some beans, I'm gonna give you some nuts, I'm gonna give you some fruits and vegetables, mix it all together, and you can make different recipes on it and then keep moving. Then we live in a real society. So everybody's not gonna just eat fruits and vegetables all day. So if you eating these beans or nuts, you wanna soak them to reduce the toxicity. So your collard greens and stuff and like your recipes in this school, I don't know if you put collard greens. No, I don't put collard greens. No, stuff like that should not be ate, period, in your estimation. Like collard greens? Yeah, collard greens, uh, spinach. Uh. Spinach is okay. It's different types of spinach. Yeah, Malabar spinach, Egyptian spinach. So spinach is a generic term. But collard greens, I would not. I don't eat collard greens. But you recommend it's, in the end, just bottom line, going to a fruit type of diet. I recommend that we shouldn't go just to a fruit type of diet because of where we live. If we lived in the tropics, we should do that. So if you pay attention to how I laid out the first slide, I had class A, which is fruit, which you should do most of the time. 50% of your diet should be fruit, period. If you're that, you're a healthy person. And then you can eat vegetables, and then you want to make some quinoas and grains and other things, you're, you're good. Um, fruit are the best foods. But what you're going to find is that because of the lack of UVB radiation, when you eat only fruit, you start emaciating, all right? Yeah, you start literally shriveling up because there are certain carbon compounds that you can only get from certain things. Like say a grain of quinoa. These have, they tell you quinoa is high in amino acids. That's a lot. First of all, it's a grain that comes from warm or tropical regions. So the substance in it is called a tertiary carboxylate. It's what can give you like density, okay? So you need some of those things. Soak those and, and, and prepare those. So I don't advocate for people who live in North America only fruitarian diet. I don't. I don't do that. Okay. Parasites. First of all, you need the substances that naturally do this in the body to be increased. So if you open up your intestinal tract from the esophagus down, you have a membrane there that has all these millions of openings that come from lymphatic vessels. What's supposed to happen in digestion from the esophagus down into the stomach, dual denim, is these little liquid bicarbonates are supposed to be there to help break down the food, right? Carbon is already naturally something that doesn't need to be broken down. But when you get traces of other substances like nitrogen in it, the carbon breaks those down and carries it out of the body. So when you deal with detox, your herbs are supposed to help you with that. Okay? So you have certain herbs that are detox herbs, like coriander, turmeric, clove. These are all plants medicinally that help you. But in order to get them, you have to make them in a tea form or soak them in some type of bicarbonate fluid. So I soak these herbs in liquid bicarbonates. Anybody want to take a test? Just put it right in your tongue. Come on up. Alright. Pop it open. That's your bottle. Pop it open. And then put put it up, put, up, put, put some under your tongue. And then let's see how you feel. Under the tongue, right? Yeah, under the tongue. That's where it goes in your Well, it's gonna it's gonna start what she's talking about. It's these are there's about 16 herbs in there soaked in bicarbonates. So it has some kick and then it has uh uh, things like eucalyptus in it. A nice little ding. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So I guarantee if I got him up here and I got him to take more and he did some jumping jacks, you have to use the restroom. It's going to trigger the urea cycle. Yeah, it's going to trigger whatever. It, it's going to trigger you to now start dumping the stuff that's in your body. That's what it's good, bro. Now, how do you know the difference between the organic foods and the foods that they, you know, Fruits and vegetables that they sell. Okay. Um, first of all, you got labels. That's the first thing. So that's that's good. Second of all, if you've been eating that way for a while, if the labeling is wrong and you eat something that's non organic, you get an automatic reaction. A little rash, itching, 
scratchiness in your throat. Those are all signs of the pesticides. So the labeling does help. And then monitoring your body's reaction to what you eat helps. If you're in an adverse situation and you cannot get access to any, then I recommend that you eat uh, fruits that have thick skin and you soak them in a hot water solution with some baking soda. Orange. It's the cleaner. Orange. Orange, mangoes, apples, whatever they may be. All right? Soak them. All right? And for the other ones that are smaller skin, I just, like blueberries, the membrane is too thin. The pesticides are already inside of the tissues. So, you know, that's a compromise. Um, so yeah, look at the labeling. And then organic only deals with the fertilization techniques. It doesn't deal with the context of the plant itself. All right, so the plant itself might be a seedless organic grape. Right. <laughs> Which means that even though it doesn't have pesticides and fertilizers, it was injected with something to neutralize its ability to produce a seed, therefore the internal genetics of it is compromised. GMO. So you want to get seeded organic. Okay. One more question. Like the difference between not not to put you two against each other. No, no, go ahead. But like a CB type. Not to say. Not to say. I just finished his uh, his detox deal. But a lot of the foods that he recommends are um, they're high in alkaline as far as the difference between alkaline and acidic. Mm -hmm. are, are you, do you pretty much agree with some of the stuff that he says with his list of foods? Or I do, I do. I use his list of foods, some of them. Some foods I don't, I don't recommend. Like when he goes hard on the mushrooms, I'm just saying, bro, brother, I'm not, I'm not going to do it because I know mushrooms is toxic. They're alkaline because of the ammonia. They're high in ammonia. So, um, but pretty much we agree, you know, the fruits and the vegetables that he prescribes, I think they're good. And then of course, you know, his his uh his his detox regimens are excellent. So, so the bladder rack and the um, he has the sea moss, is it would you like the sea yeah. moss? Do you think that's yeah. it? Yeah, see I think sea moss is 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 is, is good if oh, I have sea moss here. If only if you're getting it from a tropical location. And let me this is how you can test it. You're gonna see somebody's line. When you clean the sea moss off, don't cook it. Don't cook it. Get you a tea kettle or something, boil some hot water, turn it off, put it in, put the sea moss inside of that hot or warm water. In less than 10 minutes, it should all be dissolved. If it's not dissolved, that means it's not from tropical, a tropical environment. Right? And the reason why you want to get it from a tropical environment is because all of the mosses that are non-tropical, they are non-porous uh, gelatins, which means they don't have pores. And if they're non-porous, they, they are higher in endospores. So they have mosses all across the Boston coast and the northeast that they extract and they sell them in little stores. And you want to get you some, some Irish moss, you go buy them. And what you're getting is a fungal plant. Even the moss down there in Louisiana? I haven't had the moss from Louisiana, but I wouldn't eat it. Not based on what happened in those waters. Over the last few years, you know, had to spill a few years ago. Second, time. second, yeah, and so I get mine from Belize. There's a distributor that distributes it to Belize and different places. Because the waters are, are pretty safe, and I I use, I use it on myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, we have it here. The mosses are good because they they're dense mineral they're dense mineral base. So you can get a lot of the minerals that you need just by waking up, soaking some sea moss in it, put it in the smoothie putting in some coconut milk with some cinnamon and ginger or something and drinking it. Wow. You feel the energy. Even even though it's powder? Like that's if it's powder, call the company and ask them where they're getting it from. I prefer it to be together. And it has a lot to do with shapes of food and going into other high levels of fractality. Every piece of food has a magnetic field around it. Same so case. that's the difference between eating a blended apple and eating one that's in its shape, in its context. One is going to give you more energy, one is going to give you less. I guess, you know, I was going to say that, I guess that's where my ignorance really kick in, because when you have, like, like you, like you said, like a, a, a SEBI that, that sells, you have various uh, people that, herbalists that sell sea moss, but it's, it's powder form. It's, it's, it's commercial. Huh? It's commercial. See, that's what I'm saying. Now, 
when I I don't I don't sell a lot of health products per se. I, I mean, I sell it to people who are in transition, but that's not my goal. In six months, if you've been taking my products and you're still taking them, I don't, I don't need to see you. I already know you, you, you're not trying to, you know. Because you should not be staying on supplementation your whole life. You should be, if you have done, follow the instructions correctly, your body should have already experienced a level of detox that puts you in a position to have the strength and the vitality to resist those little cravings, because those cravings go away as the colonies of parasites go away. They go away. You don't even have them. If you're still having the cravings after six months on a diet and taking supplementation, that means supplementation is assisting the parasites that stay in existence. So, yeah. And you still got the cravings when you smell, walk past the, the fish and the chicken, you're like, damn. It should smell bad to you at some point. Once you get to that point where the stuff smells bad, you know, okay, yeah, I'm doing right. It's still smelling good. Oh. Those guys in there. I was at a pharmacy yesterday, and he suggested that I take a shingle shot. Now, uh, everybody who's over 16 uh, should take a, uh, this shot. What do you think about that? I don't think you need that. I think if you get enough mango inside of your body, you'll be fine. You're going to get shingles. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I, I'm enjoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need it. You know what I mean? Go to the store, buy you some organic mango, have some every other day or something like that, and you'll be fine. Peace, uh, two, questions. two questions. What about for individuals with, uh, I was saying Parkinson's earlier, Parkinson's and uh, dementia? Um, about three or four ways that's happening. Usually people who get all the dental amalgams with the, the metals in it, when they're younger and they keep them in, those metals leach out and they bind to your neural synapses, your, your nerves and your brain. So that causes the electrical output of those uh, nerves to decrease. So if you have any work done, dentistry, and you have metal, metals like mercury in your mouth, see if you can get those feelings changed to a non-toxic substance. We can talk to your dentist about that. That's what the that's for any type of dementia, Alzheimer's, any type of thing that you begin to basically slowly go through through what dementia does to you, which is causes you to lose your basic senses and forgetfulness, and it's affecting a certain part of the brain. Your memory goes, all those things. So dental amount. Second thing is you're eating high levels of fish, you're gonna get the mercury out of your body. So you have to decrease the levels of fish and see, see uh, seafood that you eat. Because all that stuff has is high metal, right? So that's you need a detox from both of those. Even after you get the change, you need a detox from both. Antiperspirant, antiperspirant, metals, aluminum, all right. You put uh, through female products or through you know deodorants, all right. That's another way that you're getting uh, the high metals. Another way, if you don't have a filter on your shower, you can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, something. Go buy your forty dollar filter, put it on your shower, so you can get rid of the lead, the cadmium, the arsenic, and the mercury that's in the municipal water. Okay, so with those four ways, you can decrease. And then, if you want to detox the metals from your body, you can use uh, red clay, sprinkle powders of red clay inside of your tea or something that helps bind to the the, the metals and bring it out of the body. Uh, onions, all right. The onions help bind to the mercury and the lead. Take it out of the body. Romaine lettuce, excellent. Uh, cilantro and parsley also help with metal detox. And there's some other stuff in the book. Um, again, in this book that we have, they talk about uh, metal detox and, 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 and getting that stuff out of your body. So those are the four main ways. Go ahead, bro. What, what about the, uh, what the carbon? Uh, I think it's radon. Ray where they take the. Um, yeah, yeah, that's using basically activated charcoal. Activated charcoal it's carbon. Okay. You're increasing the carbon in the body, but you can eat fruit and do it better because the fruit is hydrated. Fruit is okay. mm -hmm. Alright, my second one was, did you hear about the, the professor at the University of Syracuse that made a tree, not made a tree, <coughs> actually took 
different fruits from different trees and the way he cut one tree to combine the limbs from the other trees that have 40 different fruits on one tree. Okay. That's the problem. It's craftation. So, um, yeah, it's, it's like cross-pollination on steroids. Sam, Sam Van Atkins. No, I never heard his name. I never heard him. Seriously, it's like going on right now. Yeah, I wouldn't eat it. I wouldn't eat it. I mean, that's just my point. If, it, if you go to graft a tree and make, I ain't touching it. All right, and the other part was, you was talking about the RV chips. Um, I think it's in Arizona. They was hurt taking the homeless and putting them into <coughs> prison camp. Do you have any water here? Huh? Oh, I think it's in Arizona. They were taking the homeless from Arizona and putting them into prison camps and putting chips in them. They didn't, even if they didn't come, they would still grab them off the street and put chips in them. They were locking them up forever. Listen, let me say, I mean, when you get into what's happening with people on, I mean, you have, the University of Pennsylvania, in, in uh, so-called Pennsylvania, where I'm at, they always have ads. And I've heard stories about people going and, you know, getting paid, supposed to get paid to do some type of experiment, never seen them again. So we got to be careful, you know, out here in the world because, you know, we live in, we live in a rough terrain. What do you think about the amount of time to go for the silver as far as? I think it's a waste of time. You extract one metal and isolate it and try to put it inside your body. Body is like a computer. It only remembers what the earth has left it a memory for. So if you want some gold, you can get some uh, chickweed. All right? Chickweed and uva ursi both have gold in them. All right? And it's in the context of how it would be bi made, made bioavailable to the body. When you isolate a metal, it just becomes a metal. So now you're going to have gold toxicity inside your body. Um, so the whole history of monatomic gold came from theories that white people had from that ancient Egypt. It was using it as powder and they had no evidence of this stuff. All these new ages trying to explain what happened to our people. It's not that difficult. You know what I mean? And then what's the end game? Are you trying to heal? You see what I'm saying? So how you, if you're going to take mountain time to go, what, you going to eat cheese sticks? You see what I'm saying? Like if a, a person who begins to get healthy, you can hear the garbage. It's like, okay, we ain't, we ain't got to be But real quick, tomorrow we're going to be in here. What's our time tomorrow? Four. 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 Okay, so tomorrow we is, is going to be longer, okay? Have more time. And if, um, first of all, if there was anybody that came here that had an issue, so some people called me yesterday had an issue with an intake or something of that nature, I need you to fill out an intake. So if you need documents that you are missing, then we can produce those documents and bring them tomorrow. All right? If they're nationals or non-nationals or somebody who did that. If not, then we're fine. Um, if there's anybody who wants to meet directly with me today, I'm going to give you my number, so when we leave here, because I got a little bit of running around to do, when we leave here, I'll be doing meetings from about uh, 5 to about 9 today, and then tomorrow from about 11 to 2, I'm going to be doing some consultations. So if you need a health consultation or legal consultation, you can take this number down. I'm going to give it to you right now. This is my direct cell. Oh, I got so many cell phones, I got to remove the number. All right, it's 267 258 267-258-8864. So if anybody wants a health consultation that I talked about earlier, doing the reading that gives you that large report or whatever will be at the suite and we'll be doing those and you know other any other types of discussions on that. Um, and we're doing that tomorrow as well. So you can call and get that um, what time? from 11 to 2 tomorrow. Before we come here, and um, 
I want y'all to get here early, so you know if, if if we can get in the building, maybe we can do a few um, a few before, and then this evening from five to nine we'll be doing you know anybody who wants consultations. We already got a few that are set up, so um, but it doesn't take long to do it. It depends on what type of consultation that you're doing. If you're doing a health consultation, it's fifty dollars, and we give you the whole printout right there on the spot. Um, the other consultations, the legal ones, are 50, and if you want extended work, it'll be based on whatever you're doing. We already did our business registry, so we can't register any businesses because the database is closed on Friday. It'll open again on Monday, but if you are interested in starting some type of tax exempt entity, tribal business, or any of that, I'll go over that thoroughly tomorrow, so I'll have applications for those and how you can do it later, go to the website and register, or how you can do it while we're here, all right? Because uh, there's a number of services that we have. And hopefully Jabari is here tomorrow so I can um, talk to him and get a status report on some things that are going on here. But we'll be able to have a, a much more extensive conversation on debts and nationality tomorrow. We're going to be dealing with money and, and, and nationality. Go ahead, bro. Um, I think I'll probably be here for For, for Jabari? Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, that's good then, because I have some documents for him today that I know I can, I can deliver to you if he had a genealogy that he, um, that he had done. Um, I got one that's that do too. A genealogy? Genealogy, several things. Okay, well, if you got documents, yeah. If you got documents, see me afterwards, and then we can figure out what it is, and I can I got access to all the stuff to, to, to produce it while we're So, Jabari is back active. Um, well, the, the local group hasn't been active. Yeah, and, know. you know, that's just a matter of people not doing classes. We have a full curriculum. Everybody has the, the curriculum, which lays out every week what to go over, what books to use. You know what I mean? I got a whole curriculum that I laid out for them. If they're not doing it, it's because of they're not doing it. And that's my job to make sure that at least some type of class is happening on a recurrent basis. I know I realize people got lives that they got to deal with, children. Listen, I got the same children you got. Probably more. All right? I got the same responsibilities to go back to at home to make sure everybody is taken care of. We go through the same hills and valleys, but we all have a fiduciary duty. If you step up to a position, you have a fiduciary duty to see that it's carried on. If you can't carry it out, then you pass the baton to the person who can. And that's it. So um, we'll figure that out this weekend. There's no reason why we, with all the information that we have, I mean, this is just a little bit. I didn't even touch the surface of, there's no reason why we should be talking about this. Why are we not talking about it? If you're not talking about this, what are you doing? Not this in the sense of my perspective on it, but this, the importance of it to you in your life. You see what I'm saying? There should be an investment in having those community dialogues available for the people who have that information. That's it. You know what I mean? But, you know, folk, let me say something. We are too fickle, right? We let any little thing push us out of focus. And that's a sign of not having the psychological, mental, spiritual, and physical integrity to go through what you consider to be frictional obstacles. Right? right. That, that's what it is. There's nothing more than that. You see what I'm saying? Because listen. I've been doing this, I've been studying this stuff since 1997 and working with Arnold since 2005. Nigga, I've been up in Queen. <laughs> dealing with our vote, and then the, the cause and effect of dealing with people who are sick, trying to get healthy in all areas of life, and the strain that it creates, and all of that other things, it's easy to quit. It's easy. All you gotta do is say, nigga, I'm tired of y'all. Peace. <laughs> That's it. I ain't dealing with it no more. But, the awareness of what time it is, right, gives you a greater responsibility. And that's our problem. Our people really don't recognize what time it is. The time is, you either make transformation or you're done. Your lineage, your people will be done. And that's it. So we take that upon ourselves to do that so we can do it. I know it's time for us to go. Yes, thank you. Yes, I, I, I feel the energy. So listen, <laughs> brothers and sisters, <laughs> Let's give ourselves, what, five minutes to get out of here, to kind of break down and get out of here? If y'all want some health products, y'all can come up here. Y'all can get some of the books. 
the elixirs are here, all right? Uh, we got some sea moss, I got some more in the bag. We got health books, we got a whole bunch of stuff. Don't be like some of these other folks and snatch stuff and then I don't see you. Those books are usually good. You're going to get your